Hello and welcome to today's video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Hi, my name is Sumner Hobart. And for the past two years, my wife and I have had the privilege of traveling to some incredible places all around the earth, all while generating income online. And in this video, we are going to share our top five income streams with you, as well as explaining exactly what they are, how they work, some pros and cons of each to ultimately help you generate real income from anywhere on earth and ultimately gain more freedom and enjoyment in your life. And what I've done is I've timestamped each of the topics that we'll be covering here in this video in case there's a specific online business model or income source that really piques your interest. You can go ahead, click on that and get started in that specific section. But otherwise, sit back, relax, enjoy this video and let's get to it. Beginning with our first income stream and also our largest income stream is Amazon FBA where essentially what we do is we create and sell our own physical products on amazon.com. Now, there are many ways that you can generate income by selling products on Amazon, but we're gonna break down our specific way, which we believe is one of the best, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it, right? So first step of the process of what we do is we go to Google. And what we'll do is we identify product-based keywords, or basically keywords that describe a product, for example, unicorn toilet paper. And we see, okay, how many times per month is the term unicorn toilet paper typed into Google? And you can use tools like Ubersuggest, Mangools, and a whole host of other tools to help you estimate the monthly search volume of these keywords. So for unicorn toilet paper, the higher the search volume, that means there's more demand because more people are typing for this on Google. The lower the search volume means there's less demand. So we specifically try to identify high demand or high volume keywords, okay? The next thing that we do is we make this list of all these different ideas. So these are ideas that might you know, interest us or products that we see on the street or in offices. And we kind of write this down, look at their Google search volume, and then cross-reference that data with Amazon search results. So what that means is we'll take each keyword, type it into Amazon, and then we look at, okay, how many options are showing up on Amazon? And what's crazy is most of the time, there's plenty of options, very, very competitive if we were to sell our own product. But many, many times, we will find that there is this product-based keyword that people are searching for on Amazon, but guess what? There's either no options on Amazon for this specific product, or there are very weak options. Maybe not very good images, maybe the reviews for the existing options aren't very good, maybe there's only like three options um, where there should be thousands. So that's a really good indicator to us that basically people are searching for this type of product, like unicorn toilet paper, but they can't find many options on Amazon. So what we're going to do is come in and fill that void. And how we go about filling that void is we'll develop an idea for a design for this particular product. And then what we'll go do is search for suppliers in China using a website called Alibaba.com, which essentially connects American businesses or people like us with suppliers in China. Then we'll use Alibaba. And in this example, we would try to identify a supplier that already produces maybe toilet paper or some very similar product. We reach out to many and we say, hey, here's an idea for a product we have. How much would it cost per unit to produce this? with packaging, shipping, all that information. We go kind of back and forth and ultimately solidify on a supplier. We then order a test order that could be even a few hundred to maybe a thousand or more of these products just kind of as a test. Take this test order and then we send the shipment either by air or by sea into one of Amazon's fulfillment centers. As I mentioned before, this business model is called FBA or Fulfilled by Amazon. And two really cool things about selling on Amazon are, number one, that you can leverage Amazon's existing audience, meaning that Amazon has done a lot of work and spent a lot of money to build a group of people that are specifically there to purchase products, okay? So if you were to open up your own store, whether it's retail or open up your own website, people aren't just gonna come to you, right? You have to get people and draw them into your store or into your website. What's great about Amazon is you can basically tap in to that existing audience and show up in Amazon's search engine when people are searching for specific products like unicorn toilet paper for this example. And the second cool thing about Amazon is its fulfillment network. So some people have referred to Amazon as a logistics company that happens to have a website, right? So Amazon's really known and really hones in on their logistics systems. They use robotics and all of this AI to assist them. And essentially as an Amazon seller, you have the option of having Amazon handle all of the storage, all of the shipments, all the customer service, all of the returns, 
And this costs around uh, 15% of the product price, just kind of on average, to have Amazon do all of this. So it's actually fairly inexpensive, especially when you compare to other options. And it's a really, really great service that they provide because then you don't have to handle all of the inventory. You, know, you don't have to go store things in your parents' garage or go buy your own warehouse, right? Makes it very, very simple and relatively easy for someone who wants to start selling physical products online. And once we send our test order into Amazon's warehouse, then what we do is we create what's called an Amazon listing. Basically a page with some basic photos, bullet points, title, and just information describing and hopefully ultimately convincing people to purchase our product. Once we create our listing and our inventory has been scanned in to Amazon's warehouse, we're ready to start selling. What we do is we run some very basic forms of advertising, things like Amazon PPC advertising, Google ads, influencer partnerships, really nothing too complicated, but just to kind of let people know what we have for sale, start driving traffic to our listing and get people to see our products. And ultimately, people are gonna be typing in our product keywords like unicorn toilet paper or funny toilet paper, gag gifts, things like that into Amazon, they're going to see our listing there in the search results, they're gonna click, and a percent of people are going to buy. And before you know it, the more people start buying and finding your product, you start reordering more products, and you kind of just scale that product. And then from that point, you can either choose to start selling that same type of product on other platforms like Etsy, eBay, Walmart, or your own website, or you can repeat the process, go back, find another product idea, source the product, send it into Amazon, create a listing, drive some traffic, and then start selling more, and so on and so on. And that's what we've done, and that's why this has become our number one source of income and profit out of all of our business ideas. Now, the biggest downside to Amazon FBA is it does require quite a bit of upfront time to learn the necessary skills to be able to sell. You know, how to find products, how to reach out and negotiate with suppliers, um, how to optimize an Amazon listing, how to run basic, you know, advertising traffic and things like that. So that's time and there's also some capital that's obviously needed, meaning money up front that you will need to all obviously order products and then send them into Amazon. And there is some risk associated with that, just for perspective on average, for every new product that we launch, we allocate about 7,000 US dollars to launch a new type of product, meaning you know if we wanna sell unicorn toilet paper or maybe like travel packing cubes or whatever it might be, it's usually around $7,000, although some is as low as two to $3,000 for the total cost to get a new product up and running. But to put it in even better perspective, think about how much money it costs to start a Subway franchise or open up a laundromat or a restaurant or many other types of business. Amazon actually requires a lot less capital and money to get started than a lot of these other business models. So uh, just something to kind of keep in mind. And with this being said, one of the biggest upsides to Amazon FBA is the potential for profit is enormous. And to give a very specific example, literally two weeks ago from the creation of this video, I was in a room with a guy who started his Amazon business six years ago. So he sold one product on Amazon six years ago and he grew that business. And within six years, he grew his business and sold it for over a hundred million dollars all on Amazon. So again, those numbers are a little bit of an anomaly. Don't expect those numbers. I'm not telling you you'll get those numbers. We definitely don't uh, compared to that. However, the potential is enormous and we personally generate a full-time and a very good full-time income selling products on Amazon. And also in terms of keeping the business running, it's actually fairly passive. Now, it's not purely passive, it's not even close to purely passive, but in terms of the amount of time and effort we put in and the ultimate profit that we see back from our efforts, uh, is very, very high. So again, that's just been our personal experience and hopefully that helps provide some perspective on Amazon FBA. And now we move to our second income stream, which is creating content on YouTube. Ali and I actually create content on many platforms, including Facebook and Facebook groups, YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube is by far our favorite platform and it is the easiest platform to monetize out of all of the others. There are a few reasons for this. So first, YouTube is one of the few platforms that actually will pay you to get views. And this is done through what's called YouTube ads, which I think many people are familiar with, especially if you're watching this video, then you're definitely familiar with this because once you reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, you can allow advertising on your videos, both before, during your video, and after. And basically, the more eyeballs that you have on your video means that the ads 
in and around your video also get more views and get clicks and ultimately help advertisers generate income and you basically, to keep it simple, get a percentage of that, making monetization very, very simple in this way. Another benefit of YouTube, especially compared to a lot of these other social media platforms, is that your content can last for a long time. So for example, there are certain videos that we've created you know, three years ago, and then three years later, right, from getting no views, they all of a sudden start getting thousands or even tens of thousands of views out of nowhere, obviously driving up uh, the income that we generate from the ads on that video, as well as some of our other monetization that I'll talk about in a second. Um, so really, really powerful, and your time and effort really go a long way with YouTube. It's also fairly easy, even as a small creator or a micro influencer, to get brand sponsorships. So for me, I had about 5,000 subscribers at the time, and I was reached out to by a company uh, to basically create a sponsored video for them. So this is basically a video where I talk about this particular company. Um, it's a company that I use heavily, by the way, and that I you know love and use. So it was very natural and easy for me to create this video. It took me less than a day to plan, shoot, um, edit, and then post this video. And I personally got paid $650 for that one video, which is pretty awesome. And I know of other creators with a similar size, you know, fairly small audience, that get paid, you know, $1,000 or even more for a specific video, which is just kind of crazy and a really, really great opportunity. Although personally, I don't really use sponsored brand partnerships as much. Instead, what I prefer, and the number one way that I monetize all of our YouTube videos, as well as our other social media content, is with our third income stream, which is called affiliate links. And YouTube makes adding affiliate links to your description section and your comment section of each video very, very easy. Now, one of the bigger, if not the biggest downside with creating a successful YouTube channel is time. Now, not only time to plan and to create and edit content, but also the time to learn some of those basic video editing and audio editing skills in terms of the cost uh, basic equipment and audio and kind of things like that to get started can actually be very, very inexpensive. But like I said, really it's gonna be that time element uh, that you have to put in. For us, we really didn't start seeing really good results with either of the two channels that we are running now until about after a year. So just kind of put in perspective creating you know some high quality videos every single week and just not getting results for maybe a year or even longer potentially. Now keep in mind, it can definitely happen sooner, but just have that in your mindset and know that any business that you start online, period, is going to either take time, money, or both. And with this being said, the last two really important points that I wanna give you about generating real income from YouTube and starting your own channel is number one, that YouTube is a search engine. Okay, so people go to YouTube mainly to search for certain, it could be a tutorial, it could be something informative or entertaining or motivational. Type it into the search bar, they look at the options and they select whatever option they think will best help them. Okay, that's in a nutshell, the majority of how YouTube works. So as a new creator, you really wanna focus on keywords and a lot of creators don't. They just create a lot of content, hoping it'll go viral and it never does because you're not optimizing for the search engine. So to keep it really simple, what you can do is use a tool like TubeBuddy and that's what exactly what we use and type in a topic that you're interested in. So in this case, you know, online business ideas or how to make money from anywhere, right? And we type in these different keywords into TubeBuddy and the tool will actually show us whether a particular idea or a particular keyword is good or not. Meaning basically, right, is this keyword have high demand? Like are people searching for this in high volume on YouTube? And then it also looks at, you know, the level of competition. Are there already a bunch of really high quality videos that I have to compete with? Because if I make a video and it's not as good as theirs or others are longer or more in depth and mine isn't, well, are people really gonna watch and like and subscribe on my video or are they gonna choose the other videos? So what you're looking for is those high demand, low competition keywords, very similar to high demand, low competition products that you wanna create content around, especially when you're a new YouTuber and starting out, and that is the best way to grow. And if you do that and you create quality content, you will grow on YouTube. It's just a matter of time. So I just wanna kinda of give you that encouragement and that insight. And I also wanna mention that to create a successful YouTube account, you do not need a camera. You do not need to get in front of a camera and speak and write scripts. And to give you a specific example, what I encourage you to do right now, or after this video, is to type in chill out music or concentration music or music for studying into YouTube and look at the content that comes up and look at those channels overall. 
Some of these accounts are generating thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars every month in just ad revenue from YouTube ads um, because of the amount of views that they get and it can be a very, very successful channel without having a camera and camera equipment, getting in front of the camera. Yes, again, you still need to learn some basic skills uh, in, some, in terms of SEO, in terms of video or audio editing, but it's very, very realistic and more realistic than people think. And that at the end of the day, it really just takes time. And now we move to our third income stream, which is also my favorite, and that is affiliate links. So essentially how affiliate links work is you can type in one of your favorite brands that you personally use or maybe already recommend to others, type it into Google, followed by the words affiliate program, okay? So a very common example, one of the largest, if not the biggest affiliate program is the Amazon Associates or Amazon Affiliate Program. And basically, as this example, what you do is you're gonna sign up for an affiliate program, which usually in every case is going to be free to do. Find the affiliate program kind of page, you'll create an account, give some basic personal information, give the payment information as well of how you wanna get paid. And then what the company is going to do or this brand will then send you a custom unique um, tracking link or also known as an affiliate link. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take this link and you're going to put it into different content that you have online. So this could be in the description section of YouTube videos or in your Facebook group, in the bio of your Instagram. When you, you know, email or message friends, family members, or you know, a much larger audience, and you basically send this out or put this in your existing content online in strategic ways, and what happens is a percent of people who are engaging with you, who are watching your content or listening or whatever, are going to click on your affiliate link. That link is gonna take them to a certain product or service, in the Amazon example, this is going to take them to an Amazon product, right? And then if they buy that Amazon product, you get a percent of that sale that's made. And the way that you know and that Amazon knows that you made the sale is because of all that tracking that's happening with that affiliate link. Um, and again, this can go to virtually anything. So a real example of what I do is, again, you know, YouTube's a huge channel for me. So what I'll do is if there's a tool that I'm already utilizing and that I really, really like and it's really helpful to me, I'm gonna make a YouTube video and being in-depth and helpful, talking about exactly how to use this tool, how it can help, all these different things, and then mention somewhere in the video, oh, and by the way, if you're interested in this tool, I have a affiliate link in the description section of this video where you can get you know, 10% off or whatever, um, if that's the agreement with the company, or I have an affiliate link below where I get a certain percentage of each sale that's made. So if you want the tool, go ahead and access there. I'd really appreciate your support. And that's one very easy way to kind of drive traffic to those links. And the plus side of affiliate links is that it's extremely passive, right? Whether it's a product or service, it doesn't matter because you don't have to deal with any logistics. You don't have to deal with any clients or customers. You just send people traffic and if people convert into buyers, then you get a percent of every sale. So it's, you know, it can be very, very profitable and passive. Again, the biggest downside, which I kind of already alluded to, is that you do need an audience or to create content online to really generate substantial income from affiliate links. Now with friends or family members, you could already be utilizing affiliate links, which a lot of people aren't doing because they never even think about it. But like I said, to really scale this as a, as a viable business option to you know, fund all of your expenses in your life, then you'll likely need to just kind of start creating content and building an audience online. And by the way, if you already have an audience, if you're already starting to build, definitely, definitely utilize affiliate links. Amazing way to generate income online. Now moving to our fourth income stream that you've likely heard about before. This is freelancing and consulting, which now more than ever before can be done from anywhere on earth. Now, I know this is a fairly broad topic and there's a good chance you've heard about this before. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but I'm gonna briefly explain what freelancing and consulting is or what it can be. And then also my number one tip for you if you're getting into freelancing or consulting in any capacity. So first of all, freelancing is essentially where you are doing the work for a particular client. This could be social media marketing work. This could be bookkeeping. This could be graphic design. There's a whole host of things that you can do for freelance work, but basically you get contracted out. It could be for a specific project. You could even kind of get hired on in a sense um, by a certain company for a certain period of time for certain tasks or skills that you have. This can be much higher paying than having a similar position or having similar skills working for a larger corporation. In a lot of ways, you can actually charge a higher kind of premium for your services. So you can ultimately make more. And then number two is you're not chained down to a desk. Obviously things have been changing recently. Um, however, this kind of enables you for the long term to 
be a little bit more remote and abroad. Number two is consulting. This is more where you kind of help uh, a little bit more hands off, where you're not actually in there doing the work, but you're helping clients by giving them some advice, your professional opinion. Uh, maybe you do a little bit of things here or there, share your screen, or whatever it might look like, depending on what you're consulting in. And you could be a you know life coach or a life consultant. You can consult with finances or with Amazon businesses like I do. And there's a whole host of things that you can do. And really the key of all of this is to really hone in on a specific skill. And if you wanna be successful freelancing or consulting, my number one, number one piece of advice is to niche down or to get into a very specific niche. You may have heard that the riches are in the niches, and this is extremely true for freelancing or consulting. What you wanna do is if you already have a certain skill, let's say you're a graphic designer, you do not and should not be a graphic designer. You should be a graphic designer for X, for real estate, for law firms, for Amazon sellers, for you know whatever it might be, but get really specific because ironically, the more broad that you are, hey, I'm one of many graphic designers. Okay, um, you know we don't know who to choose. Maybe you can't charge as high you know of a premium, or there's a lot of options. Maybe they'll just use someone else over you. But when you get really specific, ironically, your opportunities actually open up. I'm telling you, I've seen this happen time and time again, especially in the Amazon FBA or the e-commerce space. I've seen lawyers who went from being an IP attorney to being an IP attorney for Amazon. I've seen photographers, they're just general photographers, become Amazon photography experts, and they're getting on podcasts, and they're getting all this basically free traffic or very easy way of getting clients in. Everyone's coming to them as the expert, where if they just stayed as a general photographer, they would get a lot less business. Another little hack that I did when I first started off freelancing before I kind of got into consulting more is that for the first five clients that I had, I said, hey, I'm gonna do work for all five of you for free. And if I do a good job, all that I ask is that you, you give me a testimonial on Google and Facebook. And they did, and guess what? I did such a good job for them that all five brought me on to work in more capacity and they referred me. So that's a great way to get started as a freelancer. So number one, just kind of do some basic learning, start developing a skill that you're passionate about. Number two, reach out to some, uh, to five people, it could be friends of friends or family members or whoever, work for them for free just briefly to get some results, get some testimonials. They can hire you on later, they can refer you, and that's gonna be the start of the snowball that starts piling. It can be really, really powerful. Then later on, as you refine, and if you'd like to be a little bit more hands-off, you can definitely get into more of the consulting aspect, which is what I prefer. I personally help Amazon sellers to ultimately generate more profit online. I also help people to establish uh, real legitimate online businesses. And for me personally, I charge 150 US dollars per hour for my time. Now there's definitely work that goes beforehand in prepping and I do some research of the individual or their business. And there's time afterwards of kind of recapping and giving some additional information uh, as well. But that's my current rate. I have a friend who's a lawyer. He charges $400 an hour for his services. But ultimately, your goal is to help people. How can I help someone you know, gain more value than whatever they charge me? So the more valuable skills that you learn, the higher that you can charge. And again, no skill is created equal, right? So if you are really serious about this, if you're starting from scratch, just think about some high value skills that you could learn and really seek after it, get really good at it. You'd be surprised by how much of an expert or how great you can become within a short period of time and start getting clients. And also a few good places to get started in freelancing or even consulting is number one on Fiverr, number two is on Upwork, and number three should definitely, definitely be on LinkedIn, reaching out, maybe creating even some basic content. Um, those are just some really good places to get started in freelancing and consulting. And now moving to our last, but definitely not least income stream are Udemy and Skillshare courses. So with this, I honestly feel like I have tapped into the secret that nobody else knows and it is crazy. So Ali and I sell courses on the Udemy and Skillshare platforms and this actually accounts for our second largest income stream as of now, which is a little bit more recently happening. And basically what these platforms are, so number one, Skillshare is a place where you can create a course as an instructor on a certain topic and then students will enroll in your course and you will get paid basically per minute that's watched of your course. Udemy is a little bit different, where with Udemy, again, you can create a course as an instructor, which is free to do. You don't have to pay Udemy anything. You just sign up for an account, create a course, launch that course, and once it goes live, students can then find your course on Udemy. Uh, it has very good SEO, so a lot of people can actually find you on Google. 
Find the course, click enroll, and then you get paid um, half of every sale that's made. So the average sale is somewhere between 10 to $20. Udemy keeps about half of the sale, basically for them using, using their platform and all of that and their marketing and advertising program as well. And then you keep the other half. Okay, so that's kind of overall how you can make money from creating courses. Now, when I bring up Udemy and Skillshare, there are two kind of big hesitations that I get from people. And the first is that people think it's really difficult or they're not qualified to create courses to sell online. But here's what you need to keep in mind. So for Skillshare, students can access basically all courses on Skillshare for $15 a month. So very, very inexpensive. On Udemy, like I said before, each course is about 10 to $20. So my question to you is, do you have $20 worth of information that you can share with people? Or even better, right? Do you have information to where if someone paid you $20, you'd be able to help them and add value to their life for more than $20? Well, that's the case with Ali and I. We have many skills that we've developed over our e-commerce journey and traveling the world and videography and all of these things. And what we decided to do is like, wait, like the skills that we have are worth a lot and can really, really help people, why don't we start creating courses on Udemy and Skillshare? Uh, so in terms of the level of difficulty and resources needed, creating courses on Skillshare and Udemy is about as difficult as creating videos on YouTube. It's not too difficult. There are some basic skills you need to learn on kind of the tactical videography and audio side, which really aren't that difficult. I think people just put it in their head that it's a lot harder than it really is. Uh, but the key question is, do you have something that you can share with others that can improve their life beyond that $20 price point? And to see how much a specific course topic is making on Udemy at least, what you can do is sign up for a free instructor account on Udemy. Again, anyone can sign up. So just type in um, instructor Udemy sign up on Google. It'll take you to the page, fill out your basic information and you'll likely get approved. Once you get approved, the key here is you're gonna have access to this tool called Marketplace Insights. So you're gonna go ahead and click on that tool that'll be available in your instructor dashboard. Once you click on the tool, basically what you can do is you can enter any course topic idea that you have. So think about something you're passionate about, travel videography or photography or you know, Google SEO or Python coding or you know, watercolor painting or whatever it might be. Type in that topic into the um, tool and basically Udemy is actually gonna show you the average of what the top five courses are making. And like I said, you might be kind of shocked. What I encourage you to do is go and see how much some of the top Excel courses are making on Udemy. Like I said, there are certain courses, again, these are in the higher uh, echelon, that are making $10,000 or more per month. I have good friends who are making $6,000 a month uh, for their specific courses on Udemy alone. So really, really powerful and again, you basically create this course content, you can launch then on Udemy and basically take the exact same content, maybe reformat a few videos here or there, but basically take that same content, upload to Skillshare for even more income. And aside from just the profit that can be generated from these courses, it's also very, very passive. This may be the number one business that we have where we literally put in the least amount of time and get the most return back. Again, it's not our total profit number is the highest here, but in terms of, you know, if you look at a ratio of time to profit, this would be the highest because it's very, very passive. Just a few minutes a day responding to just some questions in each course, maybe make, you know, updating certain lectures or adding some content, you know, once a month, just with any updates that happen, you know, in our case with Amazon or with Etsy or with YouTube or things like that. So very low cost risk associated just takes some time but I think is the biggest kept secret on the internet right now and still even with me saying this so few people actually go and move forward and one last point that I want to make is as you may have seen all of these business models and income streams can stand alone by themselves or they can be organically integrated with each other and this is actually how our business and our income streams evolved we started selling products on Amazon it was going well we're like oh this is great However, we would go onto YouTube and we'd look for certain types of content, like how to create a shipping plan, how to create attribution URLs, how to reach out to influencers for Amazon product launch, all of these different topics. We couldn't find information, so we decided, hey, why don't we, you know, we learn this information, it helps our business, why don't we share this with people on YouTube? So we got started. Our first videos were kind of cringeworthy, they weren't the best quality, but we slowly and surely got better. And as we improved, our audience started growing, our income started growing from YouTube. And we got to the point where like, wait, why don't we sell courses on Udemy and Skillshare? So then we did. And then we were like, hey, you know, we use these tools and they're super valuable. Why don't we also make videos about these tools and also promote them in our courses? 
So we start doing that as well. And then people start asking for our help. Hey, can you help us with our business? And could you set up this many chat flow? Can you set up this Amazon PPC campaign? Can you help us and consult? So then we started doing freelancing and consulting. And then guess what? The income that we generated off of Amazon, we used to launch more Amazon products, which made us more successful and kind of everything just naturally and really well meshes together and it comes really, really powerful, diversifies your income. Um, so like I said, any of these can stand powerfully on their own, but just consider the synergy that can be made from having multiple income streams. And I really hope you found this video valuable. If you're interested in more content like this or have any content ideas, let me know in the comment section below and consider subscribing for more. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Wishing the very best for you and your business and look forward to seeing you in future videos.